Hey guys, hi. It feels so good to be outside. You have no idea. It feels so good to be outside. Um, it's almost noon, but because finally it feels warm and tomorrow might be rainy day, I had to wash all the beddings of everybody again. And this time, not just the futon covers, but the blankets, the thick blankets. I washed everything because it's windy and it's also nice and semi sunny cloudy. But I think the clouds, the wind is going to bring the clouds and they're going to settle probably tonight. And even if it's raining tomorrow, I think everything's going to um, dry. And tonight, everybody's going to be in like nice. I like when beddings are washed and freshly put and it just feels so good and smells good and baked on the sunshine I love it I think we're soon we're gonna get rid of the very thick very 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 thick blankets and just stick to the whatever <laughs> cover up and I started suggesting the boys to um, <laughs> use the roll on for their armpit because you know they're boys and yeah stinky boys but cute, cute i love them even though they rip each other's throats every day with verbally or pushing each other on purpose or uh, it was a rough monday morning between the first and the third boy but i can't do much at least my second one is doing good now. It, it's like, thank goodness they take turns, you know? If all of them have a bad day, then oh, it will be a disaster. And the tweenies are so cute. Oh, we got, we got some puppies on the way and from the road. And I guess her puppy, she's holding it tight. It just is the same boat and I don't want her to eat it up. Oh. Oh, so cute. She has the puppy parts pretty much everywhere on her face. Oh dear. But, um, yeah, she she's a very curious little girl. She pushes the stroller from like, they hold this part and they push it together and it's the cutest thing on earth. And this guy, I think he dropped his puppies too. It's okay, it's okay, my sweet babies. You can sleep now. You can sleep now. Um, it's been another crazy weekend and it was um, a general conference kind of weekend uh, when um, the prophet of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and apostles and 70, every 70s um, and general relief society or primary or young women, young men, presidents and counselors have talks and it's really uplifting so we don't really partake of the, of the sacrament on that kind of weekend it's usually the first weekend the first saturday and sunday of the month of april and october but um since you know japan is ahead of time we don't get to listen to everything on the, on that same saturday and sunday so we do it the following one and um yeah and usually the first sunday of the month is um um a past sunday but that sunday we had sleepover friends of my oldest and also it was easter so nobody was fasting for two consecutive meals um but we did it yesterday everybody survived um skipping breakfast and waiting on lunch and my youngest that that was he was just baptized two weeks ago um he was brave he, he did it since dinner and um, when we started the fast with the prayer he didn't drink any water and didn't eat anything until lunchtime the next day and i'm so proud of him he he did a very good job um Yeah, Saturday was people playing 
um, boys going to people's houses or other boys coming to our house and playing outside or playing games Fortnite. and <laughs> anyway so that was my weekend full of and Sundays I just don't like Sundays and this last Sunday for whatever reason my body was not feeling that great at all it's like dizziness and just your, when your head is messed up it, you kind of like don't want to do anything but you still have to roll with the day and you know laundry is still waiting and I promised them like what was it oh shoot I forgot it I was supposed to put something in the slow cooker too but probably I'll put it for tomorrow morning for tomorrow night <laughs> uh, but um, yeah it's been an interesting weekend it's I actually hate Sundays the most it used to be like we drive to uh, the city for church and then come back around three four then father naps mom loads the kids and go to the park that's like every sunday when weather allowed it and um now it's like the whole day at home and they feel like stuck and it, it's not like we have a small house you guys it's like you can the twins actually can run on the hallways but you know, it's just like they're bored all the time and then they start fighting and or creating new games, which is, you know, I think it's very fun to um, use your creativity and create new things and think of another new game that come up with. And they like to film themselves putting their Halloween costumes. Sometimes that happens too. They've tried many different things, but usually ends up Sundays I have to take them out because if I don't not good but you know those two people exist now so it, it gets it requires two adults so if their father doesn't come with us I just feel it's really uphill for me and but I do it anyways with or without a help of an adult I do it anyways because you know boys appreciated it being outside just changes like me right now being out here out here and this place makes all the difference i just can't wait can't wait every day to be able to get out of the house and um just be out in nature just listening to the birds watching the clouds and listening to the nature sounds is just amazing to me and um so when we listen to the general conference talks they are a real recharge a real spiritually uplifting you and encouraging you reminding you of who you are and and helps you to refocus on the the big picture not on the small details that you have to deal with every day it makes you feel miserable and <laughs> So definitely it was helpful and emotional too. Like some talks make me want to cry. Some talks make me want to, um, you know, I, I agree with almost everything I hear. Some things, um, I, I haven't listened to the whole thing because there are two sessions on Saturday and I believe two sessions on Sunday, but I'm not quite sure if there is another one, third one. I'm not sure, but conference weekends are usually very busy and it's two hour block each i think it used to be i'm not really sure about now like if they're shorter but they used to hold the general conference um you know prior to a pandemic oh. i was um in the huge conference center um downtown in salt lake city next to the temple square and as a missionary, I used to um, be in that building a lot and take tours there. Like people would come, like random visitors would come and it would be like a complimentary tour of the building with paintings included and um, statues and monuments and somebody would volunteer their time and uh, go and play a piano there. They have like this huge grand piano. It's so beautiful, you guys, the sound. And sometimes somebody would tag along with a different instrument and they would be playing together like a violin and piano. Oh, and just people are wonderful. 
and um, the senior couple missionaries who are actually in charge there always um, they would bring like re refreshments in the coat room where we used to you know put our coats and things and bags and so we would go and snack on those things like crazy all the time oh my it was it was just wonderful but the the conference center was one of the unique buildings uh, where there is no pillars to hold it the the say the, there are three levels of it and there is no pillars to hold it so it's designed it's built like so it's just like hanging hanging the, the second and third level it's really amazing to me and um it's underground because it's like going uphill so the entrance is like ground level i think but like on the way on the way to the top when you go to the top it's like a high hill um and uh, on the top of it there is a garden you can go with an elevator you see a garden it's just so beautiful garden on the top plants on the top of it it's just all granite and waterfall there was a waterfall too i love it I, now in my mind i'm going there and i'm walking on those hallways and i just love it love it so much and that building can hold up to 30,000 people i believe if i'm not wrong with the numbers no i'm not wrong with the numbers it's a lot of people can hold and then all those people who go there they're usually not from I mean, they're encouraged to be not from Utah because, you know, in Utah or the area that Salt Lake area, you can watch it from home, but give like, give a chance to those who live in different states or abroad to come and listen to conference, um, you know, life. And so as missionaries, we were allowed to attend a session like at random. And so I really enjoyed being in the same room I mean, when I say room, that's a humongous amount of space. It's like a stadium big, seriously, so big. Um, and the organ is so huge and so beautiful. I mean, you can you can type that they have um, all kinds on YouTube of um, videos of people performing, um, the, the Tabernacle Choir performing there during conference between um talks or co christmas concerts that's my favorite my favorite when they decorate for christmas oh i love it i mean the temple square just across the street that place they start putting the christmas lights in september and october all the way to december they put christmas lights on the trees that's how many christmas lights you need and then they lit the place. It's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful, you guys. I love that place. Snow, snow, and Christmas lights. And there is this reflecting pool. I don't know if they still keep it. I'm not sure. I went there for my sister's wedding because she was sealed in the temple, in the Salt Lake City Temple, with her husband. So we went there. We flew from Hawaii. We were still students, right? But um, it was there, it was there, the, the reflecting pool, oh, so many people proposed to their um, girlfriends there. I have so many stories, <laughs> but my favorite was when um, we were down in the, where we keep our stuff and eat meals sometimes, if we stay too late or for lunch, and one night, one evening, we were about to go home and those two sisters come down and they're like so excited and so like you could you could see them their face they're like wah, wah, kind of feel and um uh, they were telling us how they saw this guy it was a very freezing cold night and um he got a lot of roses and he was he used the petals to just put them on the snow and placed them on the snow like a path that the, the his girl had to follow and at the end of it it was he was there kneeling down and so he asked i guess the sisters for assistance and so <laughs> i guess they were very thrilled to be part of the whole ordeal and um 
it was at the it ended up at the reflecting pool just outside the walls of, the, of temple square on the let's see which south south gate i know there was south gate north gate and then east and west gate um so uh, it was it was just fun and so you know like things like that makes you makes you feel like oh i wish i, I have somebody like that amazingly romantic guy to do that to me too someday not exactly the same not exactly the same um you know circumstances and place but like something like that nice so sorry guys i'm it's uphill here so um kind of running out of bread sorry but yeah you know as a missionary you don't really think about you know boyfriends guys and stuff like that you're like trying to be fully focused on serving other people because that's what the lord did so missionaries strive to develop those christ-like attributes as they slowly go every day um and find people to teach the gospel of jesus christ and who he is and why we call this church his restored church so it's fun you meet all kinds of people um and some of them are friendly most of them are friendly but there are some people who hate you just because you have a like a name tag and our name, ta name tags were really cool because it had um, not just the black name tag that says your name and the name of the church that you carry with you every day, close to your heart, but also they had our flag on the bottoms because we were sisters from all over the world. And um, I honestly had companion every six weeks from a different place. I had companions from from everywhere I had one American companion one Canadian companion my last companion and then I had from Mexico from Peru from Albania from Taiwan from Hong no Taiwan um, from the Philippines from Poland that was my trainer when I first went there that she was about she was telling me all about the place and and then I was doing the same to my Filipino companion when she was brand new from the missionary training center in Prevo. Um yeah it's it's fun it's not easy to deal with girls all over the place it's not easy because girls are all kinds of different characters but you learn to you know um that's why I always say to myself that the Lord has a sense of humor because growing up, I was with my mom as my sister. There, there was no really presence of a dad. And uh, after I was nine, he left. So, oh, look at that smoke. I'm, I'm still not going there. Oh dear, I have to probably turn around. huh? But, so like just women, like my grandma and my mom and my sister, they were my family, my pillar. And um, after that, when I served the mission, I didn't have so much presence. So the only man in our mission were the seniors. The senior couple missionaries were a, a lady and a man. And then the mission president and his counselors and their wives and that, that was it. And so everybody was else was girls. So, me having three boys boom 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 right after one after another was like what i don't really know how to do with guys <laughs> and so um, the lord was probably saying hey you've you've got a lot of ladies in your life now now it's your turn to you know raise some boys and see how how their brain works and see how they work and quite honestly to me it's hard because i mean you know you know men think differently from women and women are definitely more more on the emotional keys of life and then men are more like logistic logic and um rational not that ladies are not rational but we tend to be more um specific in our Feelings, uh, emotions, even if they um, totally 
shot them down here and I still probably keep them somewhere down and uh, you know your emotions are the drive of your actions and your attitudes and so some some people manage to hide it some people don't I'm one of those who don't and um, so raising those boys and then those twins when they came and they were a boy and a girl I was like <laughs> beyond happy to have a girl yes and then like oh another boy yay I'm gonna have four boys and one girl in my life and I hope I'm worthy enough good enough and have knowledge enough and help enough from heaven to raise those five kids in a way where they know who they are and they believe in themselves and they believe in their creator and then they know that their parents love them regardless of how different they are and um, how much miserable they feel they make each other all the time you know bottom line kids are the most precious and i just love them to death um as a matter of fact um every time when i see um a video or a post of people um to like recently those stupid tiktok i really don't like it to be honest with you but um you know when they have those short videos of and they post them on facebook all over the place so sometimes you just have to scroll it down but sometimes i sit and watch it and there there will be videos <clears throat> recently i re realized there are lots of them and the that topic of um how the parent neglects the child because of who knows what addictions like shopping workaholic shopaholic um addicted to devices specifically phones and so um the ones i watched recently were about a, a parent and a kid crossing the road and the parent with the the phone in the hands and the kid behind and then the car comes and almost and but then there's a stranger in the back that holds the kid or or stops the car and gets the phone from the parent and throws it and crushes it on the ground i think they deserve that those, those kind of parents deserve that um i mean of course you you don't have to break the phone of the parent because he already feels bad hopefully but um you know they make those to sell <laughs> um but yeah, I think I think it's real. Um, was there was um oh who told me about it? Was it my sister or my friend? I don't remember anymore. And I didn't read the article, but I was saying um, it was um, a letter or essay of a of a kid writing to a class assignment how um, she wants to become a, a phone, a cell phone, a device so that her mommy and daddy can love her and spend time with her just as much as they do with their phones I... it uh, breaks my heart and then yesterday I read about this um, you know, in the East, east it, it's, a, it's in Ukraine, a guy who is a priest in the Orthodox Church which means they um, they have a specific look they wear black long robes and um, beard, long beard, and then they have usually something on their head too. So that kind of person um, saved the lives of hundreds of children by taking them home when they're abandoned or thrown away in the trash literally because they had some kind of disability or defect. So he would take them in his home and he would take care of them and they will feel loved and they will change, they will thrive because of that. Um, I'm pretty sure he didn't have all the diapers in the world or um, like fancy food. Probably he fed them with whatever he could, but he was very generous with hugging them, making them feel special, loving them just the way they were. And, um, you know, some of them, you know, when they grow up, they would go to university and they'll come back 
some of them will come back and help him, help him to raise the other, the, the new coming brothers and sisters, they were saying. It was really sweet. I just bow to people like that, as, long, as well as those um, articles about certain individuals during the World War II. What was it? When was the... Oh, my history is... Yeah. Um, Hitler and his um, genocide with the, the Jewish people. Um, a lot of people, a lot of good um, women um, who are who were, you know, medical personnel, nurses or whatever, like they, they would go and check and they would sneak out children. They would break their bones, they would beat the, the crap out of them. But they saved thousands and thousands of Jewish children. Those good people, I bow to them. They put their lives on the line to save children. To me, children are the most precious beings in the eyes of God I, I believe that and mistreating them making them making them feel like they're nothing abandoning them to me that's a crime um, aborting them that's a that's a murder and I don't I don't want to go because nowadays if we, if we talk about that it becomes really political especially in the states in Europe I don't know People, I'm pretty sure people do it left and right. There is no laws there that um, I don't know. I'm not aware. And I'm generalizing. I don't know. Probably my country can still abort a baby anytime you want, and you just pay them and they do it. Um, but yeah, no, I can understand that. I probably could if it's like a 16 year old or a 14 year old or a raped girl, I understand. But still you could place the baby to adoption and make people who cannot have kids happy beyond measure. Again, there are different circumstances. Sometimes maybe there are exceptions. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but I know that members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, along with the Lord on their side, they don't, we don't do that. Um, and um, that's why people in the church, ladies in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints don't abort their babies when they're told that they have Down syndrome. No, we don't do that. And um, everybody deserves life. Everybody deserves to, you cannot take that agency from that living person inside of you, whether they should live or not because of your um, own comfort and, uh, or discomfort or you try to avoid. Anyways, whatever the circumstances are. But anyways, there's lots of um, um, places where kids are abandoned completely and from there um, from those um, you know the caregivers are not particularly that great or inspiring them or encouraging them to be the the human beings that they have the potential to become and be um, instead of making them feel like they could contribute to the society with their talents that they're given and um, building helping them build their confidence in themselves they what they do is they degrade them they um make them feel they are um they're a burden to the society and um you know every tax penny goes to them and for nothing kind of like i don't know i hope i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong but that's what it is back home because most people who abandon their kids are usually with um, disabilities or gypsies. But with that said, it's not always the, the way. And it's not, it's not always the case, I mean. So how can I help? I don't know. But last night we had this talk with my third boy, who, like I told you, was baptized recently. 
and I was telling him about this priest in Ukraine, how he saves and he takes care and changes the lives of those kids that are totally abandoned from, from newborns. I mean, he, I don't know. So I was telling him what I read about that. And he said, mommy, when I grow up, I want to do something like that too. I want to help the children. I'm like, I know me too. But if you cannot do it because you don't have the means to, or you don't have the environment around you where, you know, that's not like, see everybody, you know, would like to see where we live. I don't know of any abundant kids here on the streets. Maybe in the big cities they do. Maybe in the big cities they do. They probably trash them. Like trash, like organic trash. Um, I've heard of all kinds of people giving birth in the toilets, in the mall, or it's just, ah. Uh... Anyway, so, but I don't judge you guys. Every, every lady goes through, I mean, no, I don't judge them. It's not my call, it's not my place to judge anybody. Um, but he was telling me how he wants to help uh, little humans and also animals. <laughs> you know, little kids are amazing how they have the, the heart, the soul and the creativity to find ways to reach out and help in ways adults cannot. I, I feel like, like Christopher Robin, you know, Christopher Robin and Pooh. He was this pure soul and you know silly old bear and like and then when he grows up like in the second movie i really don't like it like as a grown-up how he and his sister you know i don't know i just didn't like it because i don't like adults i, I feel like i just like children because in their mind the the world is more colorful or more it's brighter and adults are so boring and um gray colors and dark and weary and you know what i mean i don't know does it make sense i'm i'm not generalizing all, all adults you know some adults are really um animated characters but um yeah in general like you forget to look up and look at the sky and the see the flowers around in the nature and the little things that a kid will find and be happy with like you i would give those to like just a little flower from the road like literally from the road somewhere from those like little grasses i would give them a flower and they will give me the biggest smile and they will laugh and they will keep it as something so precious or just drop it down and just keep moving you know adults don't do that they just think about what to put in their belly how to entertain their soul after a, a very a great day at work and whoever made them angry or whoever made them excited or promotions or backbiting or or helping somebody but at the end of the day just everybody wants to find their comfortable zone where they can stare at their phone in the dark and I just don't get it I just don't get it I purposely don't really I leave my phone here and there and everywhere and I don't really look for it unless I know around the time of my my mom calls me or my sister and I will leave messages to each other and that's what I use it for mostly because that's what I feel like is right for me and comfortable for me okay I have no intentions to go home anytime soon I don't need bathroom thank goodness those two have to sleep for a while it's 12 30 okay yeah they have to sleep it's been only 12 30 minutes since we've been out but anyways I don't want to keep this long I just wanted to um, share with you like something that you could be change of you know um i'm not a person who would tell you go and do this and that maybe i'll just tell it to my kids because my kids have to learn to do things but um i'm not 
pushing my ideas or my religion or what I no religion my beliefs into anybody I'm just sharing information and experiences and how great I felt to be honest with you I love Utah more than my hometown back in Bulgaria because that place and I don't know all of you. I know Salt Lake and I know Provo and I know Bountiful and I know um, pretty much it. But I just love um, the atmosphere, the, the history, the, the goodness there, the people, the, the historical sites. I want my kids to know about that place because I was there and I partook of the happiness there and I want them to do it too. And uh, I know life made it, pandemic made life really hard in general, but I pray that there will be a chance for us to go there and for them to see and feel what I have felt for those 18 short months of my mission um, actually two of them were in Colorado but that's a story for another day okay I'll tell you about Colorado how much I love Colorado actually I would love to live in Colorado if I could it was always my dream Colorado Springs is beautiful I spent two short months actually there but I'll tell you about it tomorrow maybe um, go out there little moms moms of all sizes and shapes and ages and color and love your children and teach them to be decent citizens that's just a suggestion okay i'm not telling you what to do but i know you do you love your kids i know you do and they're everything to you just like mine everything to me regardless of anything else they're my priority and I know moms put their lives on stop so that they can um, have, be part of the life unfolding for their children. I really like that. Yesterday, um, another foreigner who lives here, sorry, just we'll finish that story, um, texted me like, he, uh, introduced her to our local here neighbor um hair salon lady and she's good but like she charges a lot like it's, it's quite expensive but so we found this cheaper place where i take my boys to buzz their hairs in a nice style because can't do it anymore at home with, with the buzzer i mean i can just buzz one size and that's it but anyway so they're like now want to be cool so she was asking about that place and i was like well i have to go and check with them and set an appointment but she ended up going to a different place with another friend and I don't really know where I was going with that story well oh, I'm so anyways um yeah putting your life on hold I I was looking forward to actually um set an appointment for her and I to um I don't know what she wanted to do with her hair but I just wanted to have like a little um cut but then I talked to my sister and she's like, you know what, you can do it at home. You just have to put your hair in, in a ponytail and cut off the edges. And, and she showed me her hair and she said, it looks perfect, it looks like on layers. And it looks nice and refreshing. So I might do that actually at home. <laughs> I might do that. Because, you know, to go somewhere, set an appointment, tag along those little ones with me in the stroller probably. And that particular place, the cheap one, they smoke there, so it's really stinky. And I don't like my kids to be secondhand smokers. So that's what I'm talking about, putting your life on hold. Who cares about hair? Who cares about skin? Who cares about weight? Who cares about anything? As long as they're fed, dry, walked napped and loved everything is fine so with that said i will see you next time bye bye